I know these scores look a little strange, but we're under a new ruling now that each individual judge may take a deduction of 0.05. That's in the women's competition, not so in the men's, where Igor Korobchinsky is about to go up on the parallel bars. Nice giant swing. Stutz to handstand. Healy twirl, right into a reverse Stutz, and another Healy twirl. That's gonna cost him a little walk on the hands. Diamidov, his beautiful line, and good double tuck dismount. Igor Korobchinsky, just 18 years of age. Each year the Soviets send us another new exciting Soviet male gymnast to see. Now watch right here. After his Healy twirl, hot pirouette, little step with the hands. Korobchinsky with a 9.7, a total of 48.3. That keeps him up in the top group. Meanwhile, at the balance scheme, Bella Caroli prepares Stevie Mills. Now, her teammate, Christy Phillips, left Bella back in January. Now, with Don Peters in San Diego, we asked Phoebe if she misses her pal. It's a little bit different in the gym without her being there, I guess just because I'm so used to it. But there's a lot of other girls on the team that push me just as much as Christy did, so that part of it doesn't matter. And every time I go into the gym, I always have a goal, whether she's there or not, you know, to do the best that I can. So that way, it doesn't really matter. Are you two staying in touch at all, seeing how each other are doing? Well, she's called me one time. Yeah, we'll see each other at the meets and stuff. Well, they were friends and teammates and competitors, obviously. In talking with Phoebe, what really stands out is her level of confidence right now, which is so important this year. She's got the Olympics coming up. This is a great lead up. Now here is her hardest move. Two layout step outs. Oh, perfect. It's the same pass that Svetlana did, but she just nailed it. Nice position right here. What I love about Phoebe is look at her toe point. Perfectly straight legs. <laughs> Little combination of Michelle Desair and Pam Bilek in one move. You have to wonder about her confidence level. Uh, it seems to have shot up in the last year. And how much of that may have to do with Christy being gone. I don't really think that has a lot to do with her confidence level. The two of them really were good for each other. They pushed each other in the gym, but yet they were good friends. Gain her layout. Again, notice the good form. It's what it's gonna take to win an Olympic medal. Can't give away any tenths of a point. Here's her dismount, round off, double back. Almost over-rotated that. Most gymnasts would have sat down. Great job by Phoebe Mills. She knows it. So does Bella. They <laughs> were a little nervous at this one, buddy. <laughs> they were <all> ugly. <laughs> Bella wears his emotions on his sleeve. Look at the perfection here. Two layout step outs right in a row. Score nine. Doesn't budge an inch. 9.80 for Phoebe Mills. A total now of 29.588, and she holds on to first place. One rotation to go. Now they've introduced Kevin Davis of the United States over on the parallel bars. This is a strong event for Kevin. Definitely one of his best. Could possibly help move him up from fifth. He had dropped there after the vault event. Diamidoff, front up rise. Now here's two Healy twirls. Here's the second. Moving very well so far. Charleston, South Carolina, former star at Nebraska. She's definitely 
be a strong performance. Because of the missed routines of Tapelt and Tricotti, he's got a chance to move up here. After hurting himself at the Pan American Games, it's great to see him performing so well here. Kevin Davis taking dead aim at the Olympic team, and they give him a 9.8 on the parallel bars. And so that will move him into a tie for second place with Sven Tippelt of East Germany. In the women's competition, Phoebe Mills of the United States still in first place, Baita of the Soviet Union second, and Shelley Stack, the young American, is tied for third place. West women's gymnastics team. Earlier today, the United States Gymnastics Federation officially named Don Peters, who coached the Olympic team in 1984, as coach for the women's team in Seoul, Korea. He replaces Greg Marsden, who resigned in January after coaching the women through the Pan American and World Championships. When Marsden took the job, he thought he had total authority. He didn't. Throughout our conversations, my overriding concern with that whole situation was that I would be, whatever my position would be, is I would have the authority within that position to determine a philosophy and a direction for the program that I constantly would not be second-guessed by committees or administrative staff and that kind of thing. Give me what I need, back off, give me a fair chance uh, to develop something, and then evaluate that. If I'm doing a good job, keep me. If I'm not, find somebody else. From our standpoint, when we named Greg the coach, uh, it was our opinion also that uh, he would have as much authority as our structure allowed. I think the USGF felt like once they got me there, then they could do anything they wanted to do. And because, because uh, well, he wouldn't give up being the Olympic coach. I mean, that's everybody's dream. He took authority like he usually does, very, very forcefully and very, very well in his own program as it's run at Utah. He does a great job with it. Coming in and all of a sudden saying to these people who had been involved in this elite program for years and years and years, now I'm going to make the decisions, now I'm calling the shots, that becomes suspect. Traditionally, a source of conflict for the U.S. women's Olympic coaches has been the role of the gymnast's personal coach. It's complicated to take a kid that's worked with a coach, that knows that coach's energy, knows that, that coach's head, knows what turns them on and what, what gets them ready, and all of a sudden turn them over to somebody else who may say, we're not going to work out every day. We're going to work out four days a week. We're not going to work out six hours a day. We're going to work out three hours a day. It would be like asking Bobby Knight to coach the Olympic basketball team and then bringing all their, all their coaches with them. And each coach takes their kid and does their own thing during the, uh, uh, during the practices. And then you expect them to come together and compete it as a tight-knit group uh, when they march out on the floor. It's just unrealistic. Marsden also questions the motives of private coaches, in particular Bella Caroli. My decision to resign had nothing to do with Bella. Unfortunately, I have come out of this thing feeling like Bella is much more concerned about Bella and, and who he's coaching at the time than he is about our nation or the national program. Who, who cares for the name, the name of that coach? That, that, that's not supposed to be a, a major issue. My personal opinion is that, that Bella uh, won the gold and came to the United States for some gold of his own. <laughs> I'm not promoting myself. Probably my athletes are promoting themselves, and I'm visible because my athletes. But I don't consider I'm promoting myself. Golly, I'm mm -hmm. providing my athletes. I'm making the little kids to be a winner. And sure, I'm around. I cannot run away. <laughs> so I'm there. Recent Olympic success has USGF coffers filled to the brim, but as you might expect, opinions differ as to where the money is going. Unfortunately, uh, uh, money corrupts, and I think that uh, too much money has been spent on the adults and the committees and travel and whining and dining and, and limousines. Absolutely incorrect. We don't travel in limousines, and if there's travel by the coaches, that is part of the coaches' education program, and it's directed by the coaches themselves. With all this bickering among the adults, what hopes do the American gymnasts carry going into the Olympics? I think if the kids and the coaches come together and, and work together towards a common goal, uh, that uh, it's not absolutely out of the question, um, with a little luck uh, that we're talented enough to be third, fourth. Okay, that would be if everything goes right. Gosh, I hope we're gonna be good. I hope we're gonna be very, very visible 
and very successful. Believe me, they are busting their tails right now because the most important day of their life is coming, and that's when they walk on the floor of the Olympic Games. And uh, regardless of what the adults do, the kids are going to be ready. One other note. Bella Caroli has been named head of the U.S. Women's Olympic right, Delegation. Please. We'll be back with more gymnastics in just a moment. Yeah. University in Fairfax, Virginia, and just about ready for the final rotation. And certainly the Americans, Kathy, are doing very well at this point because on the men's side, we've got Kevin Davis tied for second place. Tough chance to catch Marius Tobe of Romania, but on the high bar, who knows? Kevin stands a great chance of, of staying in second position because he's very good on this event. Also, you've got to keep in mind that high bar is a very exciting but very risky event. It's very easy to miss one of the big release moves that the guys are doing, and that's five-tenths of a point. So he's not completely out of the running for first place. Well, he's in the battle with Sven Teppelt to hold on to second place, which, of course, is not too shabby. Now, on the women's side, we have the American girls one and three, Phoebe Mills in first place, and Shelly Stack in third. And what are uh, Phoebe's chances of being caught by the Soviet? Phoebe's very good on the floor exercise, so it, it should be fairly easy for her to stay in first place. She has about a four-tenths lead over the Soviet gymnast. That should be fairly easy to maintain. The Soviet gymnast, however, wait till you see her tumbling passes. They're unbelievable, so, you know, who's to say? It'll be exciting on the floor. And here is Baitova now. enjoyable on this event as you can tell by the audience really getting into her into her music and routine now this is probably the highlight of her routine watch this tumbling pass round up a handspring full and a half twist step out to a double twist punch front tumbles back the other direction to a layout punch front one and a quarter when does she rest in this routine <laughs> That's a lot of tumbling for one pass. You ask when she rests, it's right here, preparing for her last tumbling pass. Can't blame her. This should be a triple twist. Done very well. Little problem on the landing. If her legs just came out. Maitava, an appreciative audience here, applauding that performance at Dandy. Let's go back and look at that second tumbling pass. This was a tremendous run. It's actually one of the new trends in women's gymnastics. They tumble one direction, rebound, and go back the other direction. It's an opportunity to add more difficulty to the same tumbling pass. Nine point nine. Well, it was plenty of difficulty in the eyes of the judges, apparently. 9.9 .9 for Baitova. That moves her into first place with Phoebe Mills still to come. And here she is with Bella Caroli. Going into it, okay? And in the end, if you do a little mistake on the beginning, do double fold. Anyhow, we will see. We will see indeed when she comes to her Florex. But meanwhile, over in the men's competition, Marius Tova of Romania about to go up on the high bar. Now, this is not his best event, but I think he can really score high enough to maintain the lead if he just puts together a consistent performance here. He does have one major release. It's a one-arm giant. Here comes his release move. It's a reverse hat. Oh, perfect distance from the bar. Setting up for his dismount. It's a double twisting, double back. Now pulls it in. He was awful close to that bar. Breathtaking performance by Marius Toba of Romania. Now let's take a look at that dismount. You see how long he hangs onto the bar. It's way too long. So he hangs it up right over the bar, but he just misses it. Well, Toba landing it beautifully and a tremendous performance by the Romanian. Where there was 9.7, and that will clinch. That will clinch the men's championship for Marius Toba.